Welcome, everybody. Hey, welcome, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening as well. Uh, my name is Maria Eugenia Mezojan. I am in charge of the sales and marketing department. Uh, on behalf of Eurotour, we welcome you at this webinar. Uh, I'm very happy to see some clients who are friends uh, joining us today. Uh, hope all of you and your families are in good health. Uh, I am with my colleagues, Adele and Juan Jose. Hi. Hola, hello. Uh, Adele and, and Juanjo, uh, they, will be they will be in charge of the webinar and I will be very pleased to answer all, all the questions that you can leave us in the, in the box. Uh, we will read them at the end uh, of the presentation and then also we will have some some minutes to 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 also open the microphones and and uh, talk with you um i we kindly ask you to to keep your um to keep in silence and and then we will have this chance to to discuss about the dubs well, uh, thank you very much again for joining us. Uh, let's start to discover Argentina, uh, our land of contrast. So, uh, Juanjo, yours, <laughs> your turn. Hello, good morning, good afternoon. My name is Juan Jose. Uh, for those who don't recognize me with this new look, <laughs> new beer, we are here still in lockdown, so we are changing our aspects. So Juan Jose, I'm a sales manager for the certain markets uh, like US, Canada, uh, and, and other markets. So probably you have seen me before in, other, in some of the touring, tourism events. So today I will start talking about uh, a general introduction to Argentina. And first, uh, introduction to who is Eurotour. Eurotour is a PNC based in Buenos Aires with offices in different parts of Argentina. In total, we have four offices, actually five offices, because in Buenos Aires we have two two offices, so we have also two offices in Calafate, Ushuaia, and one in Salta we opened two years ago. So um, this is, gives us a very good opportunity to uh, have control of the services being in those special locations. It's a very good strategy that we have been uh, planning in the last years to have these local offices in different parts of Argentina. So probably uh, we might be expanding, I'm not sure if COVID might, might make some changes to us but in our plans, but uh, for sure in the future we will plan to expand more, more locations in Argentina. Here is an, a picture of our staff in Buenos Aires. We have a very good, complete uh, professional team um, divided in different groups, uh, FITs, MICE. We have a traffic department, very professional um, bilingual staff in the office. And also with the tour guides, we have different tour guides um, that has uh, different languages. We handle the, uh, uh, Russian or special uh, languages such as the Chinese market, Japanese, so, but of course the classic, the classic uh, languages as, such as uh, English, uh, Italian, French, um, German. Let me tell you a bit of uh, Argentina. Um, for those who have never been here, we speak in Spanish. So, hola, hola, buen día, buenas tardes. This is a, a little, my little lesson in Spanish today. Uh, we have a pe our currency is the peso. We have uh, about 78, 79 pesos per dollar. So, this, are, uh, this is a very good time to visit Argentina because this is very affordable to come and visit different areas of Argentina with this currency that we have today. We have many different climates in Argentina, and this is something that I always try to mention to our clients, the big variety and diversity that we have in the same country. From north to south, we have all kind of different climates. If we start in Buenos Aires, that I will explain later, we go to Iguazú, we have jungle, we have deserts, uh, altitude deserts, we have wine area here in Mendoza, we have lake area in, in the northern of Patagonia, the glaciers down here closer, uh, to uh, Ushuaia at the end of the world and uh, the gateway to Antarctica. So it's a lot of diversity and variety in the same country. Yeah? It's more than 44 million inhabitants. Uh, almost half of that lives in Buenos Aires and in the province of, of uh, Buenos Aires. And uh, it's one of the largest uh, countries in the world, in the top 10 largest countries in the world. 
So that's why we always uh, had to mention and recommend to uh, take flights, internal flights. That's very important to have connectivity in Argentina because we have very long distances covering from Buenos Aires to Salta and Mendoza to all the beautiful places that Adele will tell you later. So we need uh, to fly to most of the destinations in Argentina because by land will be very long to travel. This is a map just to compare Argentina to other countries in, or to here in this case with, with Europe. Uh, this is why we say that it's so big country and we need to consider this, uh, this uh, connectivity. This is the second largest country in Argentina, in South America, sorry. First comes Brazil. Of course, uh, they are much bigger than us, but we are better in soccer. <laughs> so uh, we always make fun of, of uh, we compete a lot with the soccer and sports with uh, Brazil, of course, but don't, I, we have to understand that they are better. <laughs> We have a lot of culture and history in, in general in Argentina, depending where you are. If you go to the north or if you go to Cordoba, here in Buenos Aires, in Misiones, with the Jesuitic ruins. Uh, Adel will tell you more about the different places that we can discover in all the beautiful landscapes in Argentina. So also uh, in terms of nature and wildlife, this is very important with the time now that we are living with the COVID. This will bring a lot of opportunities to bring passengers into Argentina because there's a lot of beautiful open spaces around uh, the different locations that we will discover later. Um, also active, active and adventure tours, there's plenty of opportunities if you go to the, if you get close to the Andean range, we have a lot of mountain activities to do whatever you like, mountain bike, uh, trekking, rafting, kayaking, and of course the food, food here is very important. Uh, our beef is, is uh, one of the most traditional dishes here. And as well as the Malbec, uh, Malbec wine, it's very, very good to have uh, a good beef with a Malbec wine in, in either in Buenos Aires or wherever you go in, inside Argentina, you have very good gastronomy. I will start now with Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is the capital city and the arrival point, the gateway to start any of the itineraries uh, coming into Argentina will enter via Buenos Aires. There are other starting points in Argentina, but I will, uh, that will mention if you, how to combine in Iguazú or in the lake area, how to combine with Chile or other destinations. Here we have all the airlines uh, that we today are, we are receiving into Buenos Aires with direct flights. We have two airports in Buenos Aires. So we have ESA, ECE, the international airport, and we have Aeroparque, the AEP, the domestic airport that connects to most of these touristic destinations that I was mentioning before, like Salta, Mendoza, Bariloche. Most of the, um, these uh, flights, domestic flights are around two hours, except the um, Ushuaia is the longest flight that we have. It's about four hours flight. Um, the CESA airport is located about one hour, about one hour out of the city and the domestic airport is very close to the city. If you are in a central downtown hotel, we have uh, just 20, 30 minutes distance depending on traffic, but uh, it's, it's a very short distance. So as I was saying, uh, Buenos Aires is the gateway. Uh, we have all, all four seasons, um, but very mild winters. It's not a, we never get snow here in Buenos Aires. It's probably the humidity is the most the, what you feel more uh, in the summertime, probably we get up to 30, 35 uh, centigrades uh, high, and that might be the, the highest temperature that we get. Um, and it's very well connected to other cities in South America. So it's very good to combine um, Buenos Aires as a starting point with, for example, Sao Paulo, Lima, uh, Santiago de Chile. So it's a very good uh, way to combine South America. We recommend minimum three nights. Um, some people combine it to one night at the starting of the itinerary and two at the end, because normally most of the flights are overnight coming from Europe or from the States, are, it's an overnight flight. So probably it's better to put a night at the beginning of, beginning of the itinerary when, when you start uh, here in Buenos Aires and then connect to other destinations and then on the way back stay one or two nights uh, before hitting uh, back to back home, back home. So this will be a destination to sell all year round. Here, Buenos, um, some of the main tours, of course, everybody coming into Buenos Aires has to do a city tour just to orientate themselves. 
the classic city tour will visit the typical uh, places such as La Boca. This is a beautiful uh, historic neighborhood where the, all the city started with these colorful houses, the typical picture that you probably see in different uh, brochures. Um, it's, it's, uh, but also it's a city to walk around. It's a very large city, but a lot of the tourists stays around this area, like, like Puerto Madero is here, uh, Plaza de Mayo, the main square is here, the Cabildo, uh, the obelisk, the main obelisk, uh, probably also you have seen pictures about this, this uh, main um, um, monument, and also the Colón Theater. This is all walking distance. It's just 10, 15, 20 minute walk. So we also recommend to walk a lot the city. This is a beautiful city to walk around and to do uh, different uh, combinations. Here is Recoleta, one of the most uh, um, expensive areas to live in, very, very elegant neighborhood, as well as the Puerto Madero neighborhood that is also very expensive to, to live. Um, so in this map also, you will see that uh, also most of the hotels are located in these areas, yeah? in Recoleta, in the city center, in Puerto Madero, and a few hotels uh, we have also in Palermo or in uh, the Bohemian of San Telmo neighborhood. This is a picture of the uh, pink house, very elegant. Remember, people call it the, the Paris of South America. A lot of our architects here in Buenos Aires. So it's a, an amazing, beautiful buildings that we can find uh, in the different uh, areas that we discover. At the end, you will see Rio de la Plata one of the widest rivers of the world. Here uh, we are facing the, the river, port. Actually, the people living in Buenos Aires are called Portenios, because the port connection, yeah, port, Portenio. And uh, we are um, uh, very close to, to that. And the other side of the river is Uruguay. That's another opportunity, another tour that you can take from Buenos Aires going to Colonia or Montevideo. But I will remain here telling you about Buenos Aires tour. So here is some of the attractions that we normally visit. We can walk around the well, different areas, the, the Congress, or uh, take a look at the obelisk. Here is the, the Corrientes Avenue with an, a lot of nightlife. Buenos Aires has a beautiful nightlife, uh, bars, uh, theaters, um, cafes. There's a lot of opportunities to do um, here to walk around the different areas of Buenos Aires. So here you can see the, again the obelisk, uh, the opera house. We have a lot of cultural and historical um, um, activities. The Colón Theater is, I do recommend to do the inside visit. There's a touristic visit that you can do every hour. It's a, a touristic visit that you can uh, take in the theater. Also, you can take some performance, uh, either operas or ballets. You can do um, um, you can get tickets and visit the, the theater to do uh, one, one visit there. Uh, Puente de la Mujer, this is the Puerto Madero. Here it's a, a lot of stick houses, of course, as I was selling, say, telling you, uh, a lot of beef we have here in Buenos Aires. Uh, the cemetery, we do recommend to visit the cemetery. It's amazing. The mausoleums that it's inside the cemetery is incredible. Here is the famous Evita. Uh, buried there so we do recommend to visit the cemetery because of, of this attraction and, and a lot of people want to see the Vita tomb it's uh, very famous. Tigre this is where I live actually this is my ha house you know this is uh, the museum of art in Tigre uh, I do recommend to visit the Tigre um, as, a, as a half day tour it's a uh, you take the have the opportunity to take this kind of boat to navigate through the delta this is a, a very nice tour to to take from Buenos Aires. So actually another water activity will be also to go to Colonia or Montevideo in Uruguay. You have to take a, a ferry boat to cross the river and, and you get to Uruguay on a day trip to Colonia. It's a very nice visit also to do. Uh, then if you go to the countryside, we have, um, we travel about two hours and we get to the Estancias, the land uh, of the gaucho. Gaucho is the cowboy of South America. We can operate this either on a private basis or on a regular tour. And either we can go to a, a, a classic estancia such as the Santa Susana or the, or the La Candelaria, or we can go to private estancias and stay overnight, like the case of La Bamba, which is a very exclusive estancia 
part of the Reliant Chateau, very, very good one. So we can have these different estancias experiences to get more in contact with the working uh, land estancia. This is a very, very good uh, thing to do. And of course, tango, yeah. Uh, Maru and Adele maybe later can tell you, give you a tango lesson, <laughs> virtual tango lesson. Um, so there are many things to do the, with, related to tango. Um, one of the most uh, thing that uh, tourists are taking is the dinner and tango show. Most of the ta uh, tango houses are operating on the same kind of um, service. And they include the transportation, they include the dinner with wine, and then uh, at 10 p.m. normally they start with the show. Very good standard, uh, very good uh, uh, quality. The food and the on the show in all of them are very very good. They, they most of them operate on the same level because they they include the transportation or the meal. So it's very very good. Here are some examples like Gala Tango, La Ventana, Querandí. Well, there are different tango houses. Rojo Tango is inside the Faena Hotel. Very good. And um, of course, tango um, passion our sports passion like the soccer. Uh, Independiente, that's my team. That's the only uh, name that you have to remember. No Boca, no River, only Independiente, the devil. <laughs> uh, of course, we have a lot of, we are very passionate about also about our polo. Uh, in October and November, we have the, one of the most important tournaments here, El Abierto de Palermo. It's uh, played every year in, in the Palermo field. Going to tango, um, also you can take a tango lesson and go into a milonga. Milonga is the, where local people go to dance and horseback ra horse uh, races there are plenty of uh, activities related to to sports and uh, of course as i was saying about gastronomy you have a lot of beef empanadas uh, wine the malbec wine dulce de leche the alfajores some people tried already alfajores is this sweet pastry that we have with the dulce de leche and this traditional mate, I'm not sure if you ever tried mate before, it's a bit, a bit bitter, it's a tea, hot tea. So we do the, here's my mate, we put the hot water and um, we drink it. Before COVID we shared the mate, nowadays we can't share anymore. The, the mate is a very social um, drink and uh, nowadays we only drink it alone at home. <laughs> so, um, what else? Well, a lot of architects and, and art tours that we can take in Buenos Aires, but not only these things, there are plenty of opportunities that we can do in Buenos Aires, bike tours, uh, helicopter rides, uh, Evita tours, religious tours, such as the Jewish uh, uh, in, uh, heritage uh, tour or the Pope tour. Remember the Pope Francisco is from Argentina, so we have this Pope tour. So there are many, many uh, alternatives of uh, operating in different uh, different activities so you can offer to your passengers, museum tours. Uh, so this that we have seen are only the classic tours, the city tour, the tango, the Estancia and the Tigre are the main most important ones. But we are nowadays trying to create new ideas to sell the destination in a different way, like walking tours, uh, graffiti art tour, or I don't know, there are several possibilities. Now I will, give the, my, the floor to Adele to continue with the other destinations of Argentina. Adele, if you can start uh, presenting, there you go. Very good, very good timing. You are muted. So, Hi yeah. everyone, good. <laughs> I'm Adele. Um, I work in the sales department and in the telemetry department. I'm based in France uh, and I'm uh, helping on a sales support uh, from Europe. So I will uh, continue the presentation. We will go on with uh, Iguazu, which is one of the main destination uh, in Argentina and Brazil, of course. Wait, I would like to... I'm just... All right. There we go. Can you see the presentation? Sure. So Iwasu is located in the north uh, east of Argentina at the border with uh, Brazil and Paraguay. It's uh, Adele, there... try to yeah. maximize the, the screen. I'm not sure if I'm the only one seeing it smaller. Uh, yes, there we go. Okay, there we go. 
Thank you. So Iguazu is famous for its waterfalls. There are two sides of the national park on the Brazilian side and the Argentinian side. How to reach uh, Iguazu? So as I was saying, there are two villages to reach the waterfalls. Uh, the one in Argentina is called Puerto Iguazu and you can reach it uh, by its airport. You have daily flights from Buenos Aires, Salta, Cordoba and Mendoza. Most of them are two hours flight and you have uh, several flights a day from Buenos Aires. And for passengers coming from Brazil, you have an international airport on the Brazilian side called Foz de Iguaçu, and you have daily flights from São Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, other destinations in Brazil, and from uh, Lima in Peru. So uh, Iguaçu is at the border between Argentina and Brazil, and it offers a really warm and tropical climate. So it is visitable all uh, year round. There are no season. Uh, it's well connected with Argentina's main destination, Brazil and Peru and the flights are quite short. Um, other than the Iguazu waterfalls, you also have the Jesuit ruins of Saint Ignacio at the south of uh, Iguazu for those who are seeking more historical and cultural tours. We recommend a two nights minimum stay in Iguazu. Uh, and as I was saying, it's visible all year round. Here is the map of uh, the both parks. So on the left, you have the Brazilian park. As you can see, it is a bit smaller than the Argentinian park, and it, it gives a very good view over uh, the Argentinian waterfalls. Then on the right side, you have the Argentinian side of the park. So when you arrive uh, at the entrance, you are here, and then you take a train, and you have three different circuits that you will visit during the whole day. It, both uh, excursions, the Brazilian side and the Argentinian sides, are very compatible and we always recommend to take both. The main tours in Iwasu, so uh, we would first recommend a full day on the Argentinian side. It operates on a regular or private basis, uh, all languages of course, uh, and here are some pictures of what passengers will see when taking this tour. So here are the catwalks on the Argentinian side. This is the Devil's Road uh, circuit. This is the inferior one where they go, uh, they visit the falls from uh, under the superior one and the Devil's Road that goes on top of the Devil's Road uh, waterfall and it is quite impressive. So this uh, excursion takes the whole day, it's a six hour tour and uh, you can add the Great Adventure excursion. It is a two hours boat trip that goes very near the waterfalls and through the jungle in a four and four vehicle. Then uh, we recommend the half day Brazilian side on the uh, second day of uh, the stay in, in Iguazu. Uh, it also operates on a shared or private basis. It takes uh, three hours to visit this side of the falls. And as you can see, you have a um, wide view of the, the Argentinian side. For example here. From the Brazilian side, passengers can take an optional uh, helicopter ride. It's a 15 minute flight over the falls. It is a very nice option for uh, high end passengers. And also from the Brazilian side, you can add the visit to the bird park, which is a bird sanctuary located uh, in Brazil. Uh, and passengers will have some more information about the local fauna and flora and the uh, importance of preserving uh, the animals there. I will uh, keep going with El Calafate, which uh, we can say is one of the three main destinations in Argentina. El Calafate is the land of uh, glaciars. It's located in the south of Patagonia, and it is where you will find the Perito Moreno Glaciar. How to reach El Calafate? It is a three hours flight from uh, Buenos Aires, uh, two hours flight from Ushuaia and Puerto Madryn, and also from Bariloche. Uh, you can, for passengers who are remaining in Chile, they can also take a bus from Puerto Natales or Torres del Paine, and uh, it is a full day uh, ride, six hours ride from Puerto Natales uh, and five from Torres del Paine. So, as I was saying, El Calafate is Patagonia's main destination, famous for its Glacia Pareto Moreno, and it's well connected to Argentina's main destinations, the rest of Patagonia and South Chile. 
It's famous also uh, for, for its Patagonia, uh, Patagonian estancias, and it is the greatest nation for uh, tourism of adventure and uh, active. It also is the access for El Chalten, which is known for being the capital of trekking. We recommend a two to three nights uh, minimum stay, more if passengers want to go to Chile or El Chalten. And the high season is from October to April during the summer, and the low season is from May to September during the winter. From May to September, the glacier is still visitable, but the estancias uh, will, most of them won't be accessible because of the cold. Here is a map of the region. So here you have uh, El Calafate, the little village, and the Perito Moreno Glacier is located here under the, under number three. So when uh, people visit the Perito Moreno Glacier, we take them on the uh, banks of the Lake Argentino, then into the National Park Los Glaciares, and they arrive in front of the glacier here. And so as you can see, the area is quite wide and there are other glaciers that people can visit on uh, alternative tours. I will now talk about the main tours in El Calafate, but note that there are many different options and I will only talk about the main ones. So the main one would be the full day Prieto Moreno. It's a shared or private uh, service that we offer. It takes uh, eight hours and it operates all year. During this day, passengers will explore the catwalks that are in front of the glacier. Here you have a, a picture. There you go. And uh, here is a picture of Juan Jose, uh, not so long ago, and other member of Eurotour staff in front of the glacier during a farm tour. Um, and during this full day tour, passengers have the option to take a, a boat tour uh, called Safari Nautico. It's a two hour optional navigation that goes to the south wall of the glacier. Then another way to visit the Pareto Moreno Glacier is the mini trekking. This is an alternative to the full day uh, tour. It's, a it's also a full day tour uh, and the passengers uh, will take a boat, arrive on the moraine near the glacier and have a, a two to three hours walk on the glacier and then come back uh, to the Pareto Moreno uh, catwalks. It operates from August to June. And Big Ice full day tour is another uh, alternative. It is a more demanding uh, activity for those who are really active. Uh, it operates from October to April and they will actually spend five days on the ice walking on the ice. And then uh, in El Calafate, what we like to recommend is on the first day, they do the Perito Moreno tour or a tour that allows them to see the Perito Moreno glacier. And on the second day, they to take a navigation. There are many different navigations. They uh, might look like each other, but uh, it is important to uh, notice the differences. And it really depends on uh, how much passengers want to put in this excursion and what they want to see exactly. So here is an example, the old glacier navigation would be one of the most famous one. Uh, it operates all year, all year, it's a full day navigation and it goes on different uh, arms of the Lake Argentino and on the Specatini and Uppsala Glacier. It doesn't uh, navigate in front of the Perito Moreno, for example. Then we have the Glacier Gourmet uh, full day uh, navigation. It also operates all year and uh, this navigation offers a lunch on board. We have different lunch categories, but the uh, difference is that they will navigate in front of the Perito Moreno and they will eat in front of the Specatini Glacier on board the boat. Here is another picture of this excursion. And then, for example, uh, for more upscale passengers, we have the Santa Cruz Spirit of the Glacier Cruise. It's a two days or three days uh, navigation. So passengers will spend one or two nights on board and they will explore the whole area of lakes and glaciers. And uh, this navigation operates from uh, September to April during the summertime. This is a picture of the Spirit of the Glacier uh, navigation. And uh, yeah, of course, passengers, uh, it's a hop on, hop off uh, cruise where passengers uh, disembark on some very isolated areas and do some hiking. Uh, it's a very nice uh, excursion. Then another very known excursion in El Calafate is uh, Estancia Cristina. It's an estancia located on the north of the National uh, Park Los Glaciares. And it offers four different uh, kind of activities. 
So all of them include a boat ride to arrive to the Estancia uh, and it op uh, operates from October to April. This is a navigation to get to the Estancia and then at the Estancia you have the Estancia Cristina Classic. Uh, it is uh, the most classic option. Uh, people will visit the Los Perros Waterfalls, the museum and the historical Estancia and then they will remain at the Estancia. Then you have the Estancia Cristina Discovery which we really recommend. In this one, they will visit the museum, the, the Estancia, and then they will take uh, a 4 and 4 vehicle and go to the Uppsala viewpoint, which is quite impressive, and it's the only place where they can see the Uppsala glacier. Then you have the Estancia Cristina Cañada de los Fósiles. This one links to the trekking, so they go to the Uppsala glacier and the uh, viewpoint, and then they come back with a 14 kilometer trekking through the uh, fossil canyon and the Estancia Cristina horseback riding for an alternative experience. Uh, this one does not go to the uh, Uppsala viewpoint, but uh, people will visit other very nice viewpoints of the Estancia. And then another Estancia we can strongly recommend uh, is the Estancia Nibepo. It operates on a half or full day uh, tour. It includes lunch or dinner, horseback riding and the activities at the uh, Estancia. This is a very traditional Estancia which is perfect for passengers who are willing to uh, discover the real uh, culture of the uh, Patagonian gauchos. Here um, now we'll present some half days excursion for people who are staying more than two days or are arriving in the morning with a flight or leaving in the afternoon with a flight and they can include these uh, excursions in the morning or the afternoon. This one is called Safari Experience, it's a half day tour and uh, it includes a wa animal watching, fauna watching on the land of El Calafate. This one is called Nativo Experience. It includes lunch or dinner, and um, they will go to some viewpoints of the Lake Argentino and also uh, learn more about the, the original inhabitants of the region. Uh, the Glaciarium. Glaciarium is the Glaciology Museum located in El Calafate. It's, we recommend to combine it with a full day Proto Moreno tour, so it completes uh, the knowledge people will have of the glaciar. Uh, it usually takes two hours to visit it, and there is a nice bar uh, inside the uh, Glaciarium. Then from El Calafate, people can extend the stay and uh, go to El Chalten. It's a three hours ride from El Calafate by renting uh, a car or bus or private transfer. El Chalten is accessible from October to April, um, maybe a little later, May sometimes, according to climate. And it's uh, known as being the uh, capital of trekking in Argentina. They are, it's famous for the Fitzroy, of course, and there are different uh, hiking options. And it also is fit for people who do not want to hike. There are some excursions they can do. Here is one of the most famous hike, Laguna de los Tres. It's quite demanding. Uh, Glaci uh, Caliero Glaciar. This is a very uh, nice alternative option. Not very, it's not so much touristic, so this is why it's very nice. And Lago del Desierto, for example, is an option for people who do not want to hike. Uh, they can arrive at the, at the lake by uh, transfer and then take a boat ride on the lake. And as you can see, the view is quite nice. So uh, in El Calafate, passengers will enjoy the local gastronomy, which is called the Patagonian Asado. So you have here on the uh, bottom right, the lamb uh, barbecue, uh, some good wines, of course, uh, and uh, well, the most famous one being the Asado. So here was a little resume of what uh, you can do in El Calafate, but note that there are many more things to do. Then I will keep going with the second destination in Argentina, Ushuaia, also known as the end of the world destination. Here you go, a picture of Ushuaia with the Cerro Victoria uh, behind. So here is a map of Ushuaia, so you can have an idea. Ushuaia is really south, it's the last city before uh, joining Antarctica. And how to reach Ushuaia? Uh, Ushuaia has a national airport connecting with Buenos Aires, El Calafate and Puerto Madryn. It's a three hours flight from Buenos Aires and you have many flights a day. Or you can also join Ushuaia by bus uh, from Chile, Punta Arenas. 
So Ushuaia is famous for being the end of the world and it's also the gateway to Antarctica. It is a cruise destination. Many cruises leave from Montevideo in Uruguay or Buenos Aires and uh, stop over in Ushuaia. Or also many cruises also start or end in Ushuaia and then keep going to Antarctica or Chile. For, uh, on a touristic side, uh, Ushuaia uh, has the uh, Tierra del Fuego National Park to visit and has many wildlife, penguins and sea lions colony. Uh, on the historical side, it used to be a prison, so you have many history about it. And it also is a winter sport resort. For example, the ski teams, the European ski teams go to train during our summer uh, in Argentina, during Argentina's uh, winter, of course. We recommend a two to three nights minimum stay and the high season uh, would be from October to April during the summer and the low season will be from May to September during the winter. The main tours in Ushuaia, the main tour uh, is the Tierra del Fuego National Park, it's a half day tour, SIB uh, or private services and it operates all year. The passengers will arrive at the National Park and visit the Ensenada uh, Loop and then go on to the Bahia La Pataya and Lake Asigami. There are many different options. You have the classical options and also the more active with hikes, canoe. Um, passengers can decide uh, which way they prefer to visit it. Here is a picture of the Bahia La Pataya. And in the national parks, you can also take a train. It's a one hour optional train ride. This train used to be the one that uh, took the prisoners from Ushuaia to the national park, which was not the national park at the time, to cut wood and uh, warm up themselves uh, in the island. Then uh, another tour that people can do is a city tour with a museum visit. So it operates all year and it's a SIB or private uh, tour. It takes two or three hours uh, and they visit, they visit the Presidio Museum, which used to be uh, the jail. And, oh, sorry, uh, I'm missing a picture. And uh, the end of the World Museum where they will learn more about uh, some of uh, the local, the shamanas, which used to be the local people in, uh, in Ushuaia. Then uh, in Ush Ushuaia is famous for its navigation. Uh, you have many different kinds of navigation. The more classical one would be on the big old channel and uh, with the sea lion island. And then uh, you have some with the penguin colonies and the Estancia Harberton during the penguin season. Here is a picture of the sea lion uh, island. Uh, and then all of the navigation takes, uh, the boat always go through the Les Eclairs uh, lighthouse, which is quite famous. And here are some pictures of the uh, penguin uh, navigations and the Estancia Harberton, which is located east of Ushuaia. There are different kinds of navigations in, uh, for the penguins. Some of them include uh, the disembarkment on the island and a walk with the penguins. Some of them do not include it because uh, it is necessary to have a special boat. Then Tierra del Fuego is also very good for active tourism uh, with hikes, uh, ski of course, and uh, some alternative tours at the Four and Four Lakes off-road. This tour takes passengers inside the national, the Tierra del Fuego region and goes on the Fagnano and Escondido Lake. It's a full day tour. It's not an active tour, this one. But it's a good alternative for people staying more than two days in Ushuaia. Here is a picture of the Laguna Esmeralda, one of the most famous trek in the region. And Ushuaia is famous for its santosha. It's a king crab. Uh, it's local gastronomy. It's quite famous uh, and it is very nice to try it when uh, remaining in Ushuaia. We also have a tour including uh, the king crab fishing. Then I will uh, go on with Bariloche, which is located on the north of Patagonia, at the, uh, on the foothill of the Enns Mountain. So Bariloche is famous for being the lakes region. It's at the border with Chile, as you can see on the map. To reach Bariloche, you need to take a flight from Buenos Aires or El Calafate, or to arrive from um, Puerto Varas, located in Chile. You have different options to join with Chile. Uh, you can do it by bus or by boat. So Bariloche is located on the north of Patagonia and it has an easy combination with Chile. So this is important when you arrange an itinerary for your clients to take this into account. 
uh, and to, to decide to do a combination with Chile, it's nice because they don't have to take another flight to join the two destinations. It's known for being the lake region, it's a great region for adventure destination and also uh, luxury tourism. It is a winter ski center during the, the winter. We recommend a two to three nights minimum stay and uh, the summer high season is from November to March, the winter high season is from June to August. Here are some ideas of the main tours. Here's a map of the region. So you have San Carlos de Bariloche here and as you can see it is uh, on the bank of the lake Nahuel Huapi. The main tour is the uh, small circuit, uh, Circuito Chico, go going on the peninsula Shao Shao and then coming back to Bariloche and then you have the uh, big circuit which goes to Visha Langostura, Visha Traful and come back through the Vash Encantado and you have many navigations. I will now show you the picture so you have an idea. This is a picture of the small circuit uh, when they go to the Cerro Campanario. The Civic Center, some of the lakes, Peninsula Shao Shao. Cerro Campanario view. This is some pictures of the great circuits. This is, uh, so you have an idea, a picture of the Vash Encantado. It's quite a different landscape from the rest of the, uh, of what they will see during the day. So it's very nice to have some idea of the contrast you can meet uh, in this region. Another uh, main excursion is a navigation to the is, uh, Victoria Island and the Arashano, uh, Arashanes Island. Here are some pictures. So they take a boat and they go to these two different islands uh, or the San Martin de los Andes uh, full day tour going through the Seven Lakes route. It is a very scenic and beautiful route uh, where passengers will see Seven Lakes. Then uh, this is the excursion I was talking about, uh, joining Chile with Argentina or Argentina with Chile. It is a full day or two day tour. People can uh, choose to spend the night in the middle of the itinerary. It's called the lake crossing. Here is the map. So it's the leaves and Carnos de Bariloche. They take the bus to Puerto Panuelo where they embark and then they take the boat trip to Puerto Blest. In Puerto Blest they can uh, spend the night or keep going. And then they arrive in Puerto Frias. Uh, they take the bus, they cross to Chile, arrive in Peusha, take another boat trip and arrive in Petroe where they will visit the Volcan uh, Osorno, the Petroe waterfalls and then keep going to Puerto Varas which is where they will stay for the next night. Here is a picture of the Osorno Volcano, the Lago Frias, this is uh, in the middle of the itinerary. Oh, yes. So Bariloche as I was saying before is great for uh, active tourism so you can do uh, mountain bike, kayak, rafting, trekking, of course a lot of trekking and uh, hiking. So this region is really big and is great for uh, this kind of tourism. And of course fishing, it's a very great fishing destination which is uh, huge lakes and rivers. It is also, as I was saying, a winter sport resort. It's quite nice to ski with a uh, view over the lakes. I don't think there are many places in the world offering these views. So uh, it's to take into account when spending, sending your passengers over there. And it is also famous for its local gastronomy as it used to be a Swiss and German colony. Um, we have really good beers, chocolate, and of course the uh, Patagonian asado. I will now uh, finish the Patagonia presentation with Puerto Madryn. Puerto Madryn is also located on the north of Patagonia, but on the east side, on the Atlantic side. And it is a wildlife uh, destination with its main uh, highlights, the whales and the penguins. Puerto Madryn is reachable from Trelew National Airport. You have daily flights from Buenos Aires, Ushuaia and El Calfate. And when arri arriving to Trelew, then take a transfer to Puerto Madryn being here. Puerto Madryn is the village that will uh, give access to the Peninsula Valdes where uh, all the most of the animals are. So it's located north uh, of Patagonia. It is a natural, natural regional reserve and it has a great connection with the rest of Patagonia. As I was saying, it is a wildlife destination, it is an adventure destination, and it also is a cruise stopover. Some of the cruises going from Buenos Aires to uh, Ushuaia stopover in Puerto Madryn. 
we recommend a two to three nights uh, stay and it is a seasonal destination as it really depends on the wildlife being present. The whales are present from July to December and the penguins from September to March. So the best moment to be to visit Puerto Madryn would be from October to December to have both whales and penguins. So the main tours in Puerto Madryn, uh, the first one would be the Peninsula Valdes full day tour, leaving from Puerto Madryn and visiting all the south of uh, the Peninsula Valdes or the north with the San Lorenzo Estancia, which has uh, its own penguin colony. Here are some pictures, the full day Peninsula Valdes tour. This is a picture of Caleta Valdes where the sea lions remain. Punta Delgada. Uh, and this is a picture of the Estancia San Lorenzo, which has uh, its own private uh, penguin colony. Uh, then during this full day tour, the passengers can take a whales watching navigation. It is optional and it is a two hours uh, navigation operating from July to December. As you can see, the whales are very close. So uh, as, uh, as a different navigation to the ones you can have in Canada or uh, I think uh, the USA, this one's really gets really close from the whales and it's where uh, whales come to have their calves. I can't. Yes, whale watching tour. Then another uh, good great excursion in Puerto Madryn is the Punta Tumbo penguin colony. Punta Tumbo is the biggest penguin colony in the American continent. Uh, it's a full day tour and it operates from mid-September to March when the penguins are present. It is a very uh, big uh, beach where all the penguins are. So as you can see, you have thousands and thousands of specimens and it is quite impressive. We have in the Puerto Madryn region, we have different estancias offering uh, animal safari, of course. Uh, this one is an example in Pedral, uh, offering to stay the night, spend the night, all full day tours. Oh, no. it. Yeah. Wait, can someone uh, mute the camera, please? There we go. So here. Um, so as I was saying, it is also an active destination. Uh, Puerto Madryn offers several really uh, specific activities as snorkeling with sea lions, kayak with whales and sea lions. As you can see on the picture, I think these are uh, uh, unforgettable moments. Uh, whales safari, you can have uh, not only the two hours uh, safari, uh, sorry, whales navigation, but full day tours where you can observe the whales in all their uh, Environment. I will uh, keep going with now the north of the country. So Salta is one of the main destinations in the north of uh, Argentina. It is a big region and it is known for uh, its salt flats, uh, its uh, canyons and its wine. So how to reach Salta? Salta has one national airport with daily flights from Buenos Aires, Iguazu, Córdoba and Mendoza. It's a two hours flight from uh, Buenos Aires, for example. And also on the north of uh, Salta, we have a little village called uh, Jujuy, which also has an airport uh, with daily flights from Buenos Aires. Salta, being at the border with Bolivia and Chile, is also um, reachable by bus from San Pedro de Atacama, located in Chile with the Atacama Desert, or from Bolivia. So as I was uh, saying, it's on the northwest of Argentina at the foothill of the Andes Range. We call it the NOAA. It has an easy combination with Chile and Bolivia. So it is a great destination to combine the Uyuni salt flats and uh, the Atacama Desert. And it's also uh, good to combine it with Iguazu and Mendoza as it has direct flights. It's famous for its deserts, its canyon, shungas, which are uh, local jungles and salt flats. He has a really strong and typical culture and gastronomy, very different from the rest of Argentina. And it is a great destination for uh, historical and cultural tourism or also for active tourism. 
And on the south of Salta, you have a village called Cafachate, which is famous for its high altitude wines. We, uh, for being a big region, we recommend uh, three to four nights stay, but uh, if passengers have the time, I would say five to seven days. Uh, it's visitable all year, but you have to take into account that the rainy season is between December and March. So main tours in Salta and its region. Main tour would be the walking city tour you, that can be done after a flight arriving in the morning or before a flight uh, leaving in the afternoon. They will visit the city of Salta, which is a very historical and colonial city with a very beautiful architecture. During the tour, they will visit the MAM Museum, the MAM being the high altitude museum. Then um, this is the south part of Salta, the Cafachate and Cachi region called the Calchaqui Valleys. You can do it on a full day, one full day tour to Cafachate, for example, from Salta, or a full day tour to Cachi. Or the, what we recommend is a tour leaving from Salta, going to Cachi, spending the night in Cachi, then going to Cafachate, and then spending the night in Cafachate and going back to Salta on the third day. I will show you some pictures of what you can see uh, on the route. This is a Garganta del Diablo. It's on uh, the Cafachate route from Salta. It's in the Cafachate Canyons Gorge, Quebrada de las Conchas, here between uh, Cafachate and Salta. This is a picture of the uh, wineries you will find in Cafachate with the Torrentes wine. This is a picture of the Del Obispo slope. Uh, it's between Salta and Cachi. This is a picture of a Euro Tour team with Juanjo on the right uh, in the Cafachate Gorge during a Euro Tour. Uh, tour. And uh, this is a picture of the Parque Nacional Los Carrones. Carrones are these big cactus. It's on the route between Salta and uh, Cachi. And Cachi is known for uh, its pepper production. And there are two pictures of Cachi. It's a very small and traditional village. It's worth it staying there for the night or spending uh, some hours. Uh, because of its traditional side, you will find good gastronomy and great views. This is a picture of the Quebrada de las Flechas, which uh, is between Cachi and Cafachate. It's quite impressive because of its rock. And uh, then I will go on with the north part of the Salta region called the Quebrada de Umahuaca. Um, so when people have visited the south part, we recommend to stay one more night in Salta and then go to the Quebrada de Umahuaca, which is higher in altitude. So the idea is that when they go to Cafachate and Cachi, they slowly adapt to the altitude. So uh, they can visit the Quebrada de Umahuaca and Salinas Grandes on a full day tour or two to three days circuit, which we recommend more with an overnight in Purmamarca. This is a picture of the Cerro de los Siete Colores, a seven colors hill located in Purmamarca, and the village is located right under this hill. So they visit uh, this hill during the a full day tour to Cabrera de Umahuaca. This is a picture of Umahuaca and the local fabrics here. This is the Ornical, the 14 color here, hill. Uh, this is an optional tour for during the Cabrera de Umahuaca uh, tour. The Lippen Slope, this is a, uh, the slope that reach uh, the Salinas Grandes when people are staying in Puerto Marca. It's quite impressive because it goes really high really quickly. And then this is a picture of the Salinas Grandes, which is uh, quite impressive uh, because it is a big change of scenery. Another picture of the Euro Tour team, Juanjo always there with us. And this is an alternative tour, a uh, full day to San Antonio de los Cobres. San Antonio de los Cobres is a village located north of Salta. It used to be a miners' village and uh, now it's only a touristic place. It's very high in altitude and uh, it is very interesting to uh, visit it because of the historical and cultural interest. You, on the way to uh, San Antonio de los Cobres, you have the Porvorisha viaduct and the train to the clouds, as you can see, which, which used to be the train going from Salta to San Antonio de los Cobres and then uh, going to the mines to extract the minerals. So, as I was saying, uh, Salta is, uh, can be an adventure destination and it also a, is a great destination for uh, gastronomy and uh, wine lovers as uh, we have very different uh, offers from what Argentina, the rest of Argentina uh, gives. 
And I will end this little trip to Argentina with Mendoza. Mendoza is uh, worldwide famous for its wine. Here you have the, a picture of the wineries with the end behind. Um, so how to reach Mendoza? Mendoza uh, has an international airport with flights from Buenos Aires, Salta, Córdoba, Santiago, which you can see is right in front of it, and uh, Lima, Peru. You can also reach Mendoza by bus. You have regular buses from uh, Santiago and it takes a, it's a whole day bus. And it's actually quite interesting to take it because it's a very scenic route going through the end. So uh, it is very famous for the, being the uh, wine region, the Cuchero uh, region. And it has a, an easy combination with the, the north of Argentina, so Salta region and Santiago de Chile. It's worldwide famous for being the wine region, of course. Uh, it is great for gastronomical, gastronomical tourism. And as we have the Aconcagua Summit, it is also great for adventure tourism. As it is a big region, we recommend a three to four nights uh, minimum stay, so people can have the time to visit all the wine regions. And it is visible all year, but the uh, harvest is between February and March, if passengers are especially interested uh, in this activity. So the main tours are, of course, the wine tours. You have all kinds of wine tours. Uh, the most famous wine being the Malbec, of course. You can do it on a half day or full day excursion. It includes two to three wineries and lunch in one of the wineries, of course. And uh, it is divided in uh, three regions uh, south of Mendoza. Here, so you have Mendoza. And then you have the Maipu and Luján de Cusho regions, which are south of Mendoza, close, close to Mendoza, and then the Valle de Uco, which is wider, but uh, further south of Mendoza. This is a picture of uh, the Valle de Uco uh, winery, for example. Uh, the bigger picture is from uh, Cavas, which is a wine lodge. The Luján de Cusho region with some wines. Uh, as I was saying, you have many different versions of the wine tours. You can do a bike tour, horseback riding in the vineyards. We can organize uh, cooking classes, harvest. Uh, it really depends on what your passengers are looking for. And um, so many chefs uh, are remaining in Mendoza and have their wineries and restaurants there. For example, Francis Lalanne. So it is a great destination for uh, people who are seeking gastronomical experiences. Uh, oh, and I will finish the wine tours with uh, telling you that we have many wineries that are lodges and we usually recommend to spend at least one night in one of the wineries. We have all different uh, class to the three star to the luxurious uh, lodges and it is a great experience for passengers. Then uh, as an, uh, a different tour, you have the high mountain full day tour. It is a bus tour that goes on the high routes of the ends. They go until the uh, border with Chile and come back to Mendoza to have some great views. They uh, pass by the Inca Bridge, Puerto del Inca and the Cristo Redentor, which you can see on the picture. Uspachata. And as I was saying at first, Ad uh, Mendoza is great for uh, adventure tourism with the Aconcagua trek, of course, but some other uh, trekking, uh, horseback riding tours, rafting and zip lining. This is, this is our pictures of the trekking to the Aconcagua summit. So as one who uh, was indicating at the beginning of this uh, presentation, Argentina has many different climates uh, to offer, which is great to combine and discover um, different versions of uh, Argentina. And it is uh, great for the tourists who are seeking a different country and landscapes from home. So do not uh, hesitate to follow us on the social media. We have Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, we have a great website and uh, we have a YouTube channel where you will find uh, all presentations for those who arrived maybe late or couldn't follow the whole presentation. You can find the video of the presentation online on the YouTube channel. And I will end with a little video of Argentina. <laughs>
So thank you everybody for joining us today. Yes. We will, you can activate the uh, microphones if you want to do uh, any live question. If um, not, we will remain a few minutes uh, here. And uh, if not, you have my, our email addresses, you know where to contact us. Yes. So uh, thank you again for joining us. It was a pleasure having you all on this uh, presentation of Argentina. Also, if you need uh, more specific uh, presentations about any particular area, you let us know and we can organize uh, specially for you. Thank you very much again for joining us. It has been a pleasure to share with you uh, this presentation. Thank you. Yes, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.